Hey, welcome to the Can Dialogues, a platform that unites industry leaders, come together and exchange ideas, innovation, and insights, shaping the future of healthcare marketing. Well, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Well, actually, it's still morning. I know. I know. Right? We got a couple of minutes. Before exactly. You. Exactly. Yeah. So, thank you for joining us for this Docker podcast. Absolutely. Morning at Docker Dialogues. I'd like to start off with just introduce yourself, tell yep. us who you are, what you do, what your focus is. Yep. So, Alejandro Alvarez, I am the commercial lead at M3MI. So, we're part of the M3 healthcare group, right? So, we are the syndicated research arm of the M3 global research. I started out as an intern coding advertising. So pulling ads from journals, scanning them. I worked in the mailroom. I sent out the surveys to the consumers and the physicians. And later on, I came out of college and they said, would you like to come work for us? And I said, sure, absolutely. And so I started to manage a research project called CTS and CTS 2000, Camping Tracking System and Camping tra Tracking System 2000. So one was custom, one was syndicated. And that measured, funnily enough, it measured the effectiveness of the campaigns that pharma was running. But at the time, this was mid nineties, there was only the sales rep, maybe the sales aide, yeah, and the print ad. That's it. And that was it. Yeah. Right. So you think about that and where we are today and the explosion of content platforms, tactics that are out there reaching these physicians. It's, it's kind of amazing. So I started with them. I left to get some sales experience at a software company. And then I came back and I did 10 years of selling to the media companies. So your commercial publishers, your society publishers, selling them data so that they could sell into the agencies and, and to the advertisers, the brands and so forth on where they, why their tactics were so valuable, right? In reaching the audiences that advertisers were trying to reach. I then left to go to Elsevier for several years to manage their custom solutions group. So managed a, a, a couple different pipelines of business some targeted advertising, one a curated platform called Practice Update that I don't, I don't know if you've heard of that. Yeah. Fantastic platform. Yeah. But if you know society publishing, it's, it's difficult, right? Like they're very concerned about their members and very scientific, very, very scientific. Yeah. And they don't want you to intrude on their space. You know, they were like, well, we don't want to target. We don't want to provide physician level data. And you're as a commercial person, I was like, well, everybody else is doing it. You know, we know what they're doing. But the model is still very subscription based anyway. Yes, so exactly. That's the difference. They didn't want it. They did not want to uh, risk that. Yeah. Right. So, so now you're here. Yeah. We're at Fierce Farmer Week. Yes. What brings you to Fierce Farmer Week? I think a couple of things, right? So one is our clients, right? So our clients are here. And what we're discovering is what are they here for? Like, what are they here to hear? What are they saying? What are the things that we need to be keep on top of so that we're measuring the right things for them when we're doing our surveys, right? So when we're engaging these consumers, these patients and caretakers and these HCPs, how are our clients trying to reach them? And then in the, on the reverse side is letting our clients know that this is what we see in the data, right? Like this is what we're seeing. These are the trends that we're seeing and so forth. Do you think, you know, the, the panel based research that you're doing is valuable to these people? Cause everybody's looking for that whole data attribution model thing I, and we haven't cracked it yet. Is this something that you guys are focused on as well? Yeah, no, I think absolutely right. It complements it. Yeah. Right. So what it does, it gives you the why, Yeah. right? It tells you why is the doctor, why is the patient, why is the caregiver? going to these sites or investigating information on social media, do they trust their doctors? Do they prefer one tactic to another? Do they prefer getting their information from one source or another? And, and that's the, 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 the depth and breadth of the content that, or I'm sorry, the, the data that we provide, right? So we're giving that, that perspective, right? So, so give me an example of the yeah. data set that you provide. If I'm a media agency, you know, yeah. I've got a big pharma client. What's the data set I yep. expect from you? So if you're looking to commercialize a brand, yeah. right? I think our data is foundational to that, at that effort, right? So understanding here's my target audience. How do they engage with content? Where do they go for their information? What are they looking for? 
right? And that's what we tell them. So we say, you're a... Let's say you're a new cardiology drug. Yep, you're a new cardiology drug. You want to reach a cardiologist. Who else do you need to reach as well? Interesting. Right? Like, what other specialty areas, what other allied health fields do you need to be reaching? And how are they engaging with content? So you know best, where do I start to engage them to, to drive awareness, to drive recognition of my brand, to, and then to eventually to drive script lift, right? So we're providing that foundational basis, right, of, of where to start. And are you doing it at the channel level as well to say these channels are preferred by these kinds of people versus these channels? So we have a, a couple different studies. So one is, is a media measurement study that does tactical measurement, right? So we're measuring the journals, the sites, the social media platforms, et cetera, that HCPs and, and consumers are engaging with. And so we know that, let's say in oncology, right? Like journal of clinical oncology maybe is the most well-read right? Well, the ASCO post or is clinical breast cancer being read? But maybe that's a niche journal, right? Because that's oncologists who treat breast cancer. Yeah. But we can look at that because we, we append claims data and Rx data to our data so that we can say, I want to know oncologists who are treating breast cancer, what are they reading? Where, where are they going for their information? And then, then, then presumably you could correlate that to say, these guys who read this niche publication, actually the scripts are higher as opposed to the premium publisher where there's a lower script level because they're just absolutely each with general content. Yes. So if you think about like the Lancet Ontology, yeah. right? A broad-based ontology title, but you want to reach that 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 breast cancer. Ontologist focused on breast cancer. He's got to go to look for that stuff, right? And so what I think that is good about some of these targeted platforms is that they're delivering that to you. They're delivering the, the, the right information to the right people because they, we know now this is what they're doing. In, in, in effect, then, this is what we should be delivering to them. This is the content, the information that we should be delivering to them. Instead of making them look for it, Ooh. let's curate it for them. Interesting. Right? So, yeah. So do you then look at even some of the overlays of demographic data Absolutely. in lifestyle? That's yeah. the other thing to help people make decisions. Yeah. So we have several demographic cuts. Okay. So you can look at male, female doctors. You can look at age groups. Are they hospital-based or office-based? Are they KOLs? So the funny thing is, everybody always says, well, how do you know they're a KOL? It's because they sell us. No, but no, it's not, right? It's not so, for polls. It's not so. They don't tell us, I'm a KOL, yeah. right? But what they do tell us is that what are the activities that they take part in? Are they on an editorial board? Do they speak at conferences? Are they involved in clinical research? So based on that, we say, okay, if they do a certain number of those, of those activities, then we can define them as a KOL, right? And so now we're starting to look even deeper into the data to see influence, right? Like the doctors that are region. Like they're, they're in their hospital systems. They're influencers without being KOLs, right? So we're starting to look at that as well because these people drive, right? Engaging with, with, with brands, with, with, with treatments, et cetera. And referrals, I'm assuming you could do something with yeah. referrals that way, yeah. right? Yeah. From rules to specialty and things yeah. like that, I suspense, right? Yeah. From a journal business. Yeah. So, you know, we're sitting here in the Dr. Ash studio. Yeah. Innovation is our thing. We love to do these kinds of things. We are focused mainly on doctors mm -hmm. and digital. Yep. Are you seeing a shift in those areas? Or because, you know, after COVID, a lot of reps couldn't get into buildings for right. it. Right. Right. How are doctors getting information now on new content or learning about new innovative medication? Yeah. No. So I think, and it's, it's, it goes back to demographics, right? Because I think there's differences between the different demographics of these doctors, so older doctors versus younger doctors. But what's interesting is there's also differences among specialists. So a pediatrician is a lot less technology savvy than an oncologist, right? Very tech savvy, right? So much more involved in finding information on social media or on sites or so forth. Maybe some like a pediatrician or a dermatologist maybe is still doing journals and things like that. And I'm making, you know, oh, I'm, 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 these aren't. Don't quote me on the data, but, <laughs> but these are the types of things that we find, right? So we find differences in age groups of doctors. We find differences in the specialists between the differences between each of the specialists. But to me, I think, I, I think the biggest trend to me, and I, I think it goes back to, you know, my previous experience when I started, when you think about how little 
amount of information was out there then as compared to now, right? And you think about how much is out there, it's difficult, right? Like you don't know where you need to go to find all this stuff. And there's so many different avenues that are being presented to these guys. I think, I think that's the most interesting thing to me right now is how does somebody sift through all of those options to decide what are the best options for me in, in driving awareness, recognition, and, and, and treatment and script amongst these physicians that I'm targeting, amongst these HCPs. So I think, you know, as the market is shifting, one, you've got the advent of the, you know, course of Repscom games in the building. The second one is the explosion of digital channels and this, yes. right? I can get content. And now we've got this AI thing looming over our head as well. Where does, where would data such as yours help some marketers who are using our platform, let's say, for engaging a doctor either on an account or in the, in the publishers or even in the EHR, right? How would those... So understanding, right, their engagement with the EHR, how much time are they spending there? Yeah. Are they looking for, are they looking for copay information? Are they looking for patient information? Like our patient education that they can give to their patients. What are they looking for there so that you can best deliver to your clients, right? To Doc Air's clients, how do we best deliver those audiences? So understanding what are the, what are those audiences looking for, right? Where they're going. Two, I think it's understanding your place in the omnichannel landscape, right? Like where do we fit? Yeah. Right. Because there's, you know, they're always going to go to their clinical journals, whether it's in print or online, but you guys have partnerships with these endemic platforms, right? These, 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 these players. And so how are you delivering it differently than they're delivering it and making it better for your physicians or HCPs to engage with it, right? So I think that's part of what we, we do with our, our, our clients is helping them understand their place in, the, in, in the, that omnichannel landscape, validating their tactics and their platforms, and then figuring out how do we best serve these audiences. So I, you know, in listening to you, one of the areas that could be is also what sort of content or messages you yes. deliver, right? Exactly. Because if you're telling me about their preference and their behavior and some other things, I can actually get the creative agency to use that to create craft messages that are relevant that we can as Doc Air deliver on the platform right. that's relevant, right? Yeah. No. And so one of the other things that we do beyond the, the audience and user is we track the, all the advertising. So we know what's out there, right? And so we know what your competition is saying or what, what your clients' com competitors are messaging, what they're trying to achieve in each of these different tactical, you know, platforms, right? So you can get a sense of well, how, what do I need to deliver and where? Interesting. So as we move forward and look forward, right? I think I've seen about 30 AI oriented yes. seminars and, and workshops at yes. this event, right? Everybody is talking about it. How are you guys approaching AI? Yeah. So I, I think a lot of what we're doing is we're asking the HCPs, how are you engaging with AI? What are you looking for it to provide you? Where are you engaging with it, right? Like what, on what platforms are you engaging in? What are you getting out of it? Do you plan to like understanding where 